you'll notice that once the rigging has commenced, it presents you with uh, a moving image, uh, a basic animation of your character, and we're just going to click the finish button to complete the render process. It just presents us with a list of uh, formats uh, for integration to other 3D softwares, game engines, and other platforms. We have a choice here to either view the model in our list of assets or to go straight in and animate that model. So I'm going to animate it first off. And you'll notice that it shows our model in a T-pose. And you'll notice that we can see it in a wireframe. That is the rigging that was done by Mixamo. We'll just switch that off. We can choose the rotate function and view our model from any particular vantage point. Again, we can pan up, down, left, and right. We can use the scroll wheel, very similar to what we were experiencing in the modeling platform Fuse. Then, of course, we can zoom in and out, pan up and down. So I'm going to rotate them up this way a little bit. And we can reset the camera, or we can have the camera follow this individual. This doesn't make much sense now until we start animating. But you'll notice that on the left-hand side, we've got a list of animations that we can filter. We can look for everything, which would include poses, still poses, as well as animations. So you'll notice there's a pose. He's frozen in space. And there's an animation. And they're broken down by male and female, just because the physical gestures are often markedly different. Um, and we can then look through this for various characters that have been derived from typical types of actions and games. Uh, there's a castle guard jumping up and down. So we're just switching between characters. We're using the same animation, but using different models to enact that movement. So we can switch between our different characters. I want to get back to the original. I'll go back to my assets, choose my goon. There he is in his T pose. And I want to now find the animations. And again, I can go to all. And then using the search function, I can tell it, well, I just want to look for animations. And it tells you the types of animations here. And I want to look for uh, perhaps adventure animations. And you can type whatever. You could type in walking. And it will give you whatever animations it had for walking. And so here's one walking and turning 180 degrees. Now you'll notice the sliders here allow you to slow the action down. You can change the arm spacing. And you can determine how many frames that happens for, when it starts and when it ends. So you can set up that animation. This makes him look like he's pacing back and forth. Or you can have him walk and stop. And again, you can control what's out of frame. So I'm just going to zoom out so that we get to see everything. Move him over so he starts over here in the left. And you can control the perspective how far this individual moves. And then, of course, you could record this if you wanted. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more, just so we have more of him in frame. And I like that animation. He's walking with some swagger. And 
and I'm going to add that to my assets. And that animation would then be added into my assets. So if I looked at my assets, and I looked at my animations, it's still processing that. But if I opened it up, I would get access to that animation. Now I just want to record that animation as a screen grab. So I'm starting there, and he moves to there. And I want to record it, so I'll just use Command Shift. Four. And that will allow me to then just simply record that. Sorry, I, I would use QuickTime, which I'm already running here. Um, but in QuickTime, I could use File, New Screen Recording in QuickTime, and I could record that in much the same manner as I made that screen capture. Okay, I'm just going to stop that now. And of course, you could cue that animation to be downloaded and exported in a variety of different formats to bring that animated sequence into a game engine. And we're just going to stop it.